One board, one way, one drone, one purpose. God damn it. Where even is it? Hold on. Alright, let's of all the things that could go wrong. Alright, pause video. That is where I decided to land. But I need the footage. So I'll be damned if I dealt with this thing for a whole day and lost all that work. So, the drone landed several feet into a tick-infested brush area about as deep as I am tall. I now hate this drone despite having to maintain a professional relationship with it. And oddly enough, it sparked a small train of thought about one of the reasons why I love this board, the Hoyt Street Tabor, so much. I haven't had to think about it and it hasn't failed. It just works. So if you don't feel like sitting through a full review, here's a TLDR in an effort to respect your time. The Hoyt Street Tabor stands out from not just every board that's currently out, but likely every board that will come out for quite some time. And that's because not only is it made entirely to the highest possible quality, but it's designed and built in a way that it just works, and you don't have to think about it. It doesn't mean to wow you with features that look good on marketing copy, it just works, and it works well. More power and range than you need, a near-perfect ride feel, and a size that does not feel like you're dragging a Fiat into your home. Up until now, I haven't ridden a board that I liked better than the prototypo I built myself. I kind of like this one better, so much so that I will be buying one in the fall. So if you're interested in more information, keep watching. I've also linked a brief article where I go over the internals and other things in slightly more detail if you're interested. This is kind of a skateboard. This is a skateboard. And so is this. I like to ride them because they're fun. There is always going to be a personal electric vehicle that is faster and has more range than a skateboard shaped one, because physical constraints dictate that. However, most other PEVs usually aren't as fun at any speed as a skateboard, at least for me, and that's why I love them. The Tabor very much gets the skateboard part right, in that the ride feel is clearly the part where most of the focus was. The deck is basically perfect, enough concave and edge flare for locating and control, but not so much that it becomes painful during long rides. I've ridden boards with severe concave shapes that end up really hurting my feet, especially W concaves with unforgiving centers. The Tabor doesn't have any of that. It has exactly what is needed for control and exactly what is needed for comfort. There is a slight amount of nose and tail flex inward of the base plates, and these do a pretty good job of eating up road vibrations. It's a far cry from the purely rigid carbon fiber decks with absolutely no give at all. The deck is made of bamboo and is quite thick and robust. Looking at it, you can tell it's just loaded with character and life. No notes. In 2023, it seems that the trend is to offer a gear drive with new boards, and I am so glad that the Tabor uses a belt drive. This is another area where I've seen boards release with features and claims that most riders forget about the following season. More torque, no maintenance, quieter, whatever. The most important differences to me come from running a repair shop. And when a broken or seized gear drive comes in, I end up five Red Bulls deep and cursing the world. Belt drives are practical, effective, and easy to maintain and repair. Pulleys and belts adhere to a standard, and you can source replacement belts wherever you want. Hoyt Street even took the time to address a common belt drive issue, which is belt skipping, by setting the motor pulley at a distance from the wheel pulley that causes the belt to engage with more teeth at a larger surface area of the motor pulley. Combine this with the choice of either auto tensioning via springs or manual override to get more belt tension, and it's clear that the goal was to keep the practical benefits of a belt drive and get ahead of some of the pitfalls. Even more important than that are the trucks. The Tabor uses a slightly narrower version of the trucks found on the UAV, and these Rosita trucks use the same kind of approach, with split angles, a four millimeter rake, and a slight offset, to result in a turning response that feels the closest to an actual longboard of all the East skates I've ridden so far. The only trucks I've ridden that feel as good as these are these old Kahua trucks from Haggyboard. 
they're not made anymore and that company doesn't exist anymore, so there you go. These trucks and the deck combine to make a board that feels like a longboard, natural, smooth, and just an enjoyable ride. The drive system supports it without getting in the way or causing a headache. It doesn't need to flash a bunch of hollow features at you because the drive train just drives the board. And the board, along with its ride feel, are the stars of the show. I cannot express how refreshing that is. The Tabor has different battery options, but personally, I only consider the largest one to be worth considering. I understand the desire to hit certain price points, but since the 12S8P and 12S6P are housed in the same enclosure, going for fewer cells feels like I'd just be leaving internal real estate on the table. That being said, this review loaner has the 12S8P configuration using the Molosel P42A. While those numbers and labels may or may not be familiar to you, what matters here is not just the labels attached to the marketing copy, but the reality of the battery itself. Their packs are made in-house and designed and constructed in a way that the build of the pack will outlast the cells themselves. With in-house construction and quality control, things like sloppy welds, cold solder joints, and construction slop are simply not there. It's made to last and it's made to survive. More details and photos of the internals can be found in the link below. As far as range goes, I did a bit of a range test, although not a complete one. The battery outlasts my desire to keep riding, which ends at about 20 to 25 miles straight. Less if I'm having to deal with a problematic drone. That being said, the numbers I was looking at during rides pegs this battery at about 50 to 55 miles of range at my 190 pound rider weight, traveling at about 20 to 22 miles per hour in 85 degree Fahrenheit weather. The range is not just affected by battery size, by the way. Outside of the rider, the range is given a bit of a boost by the five inch pneumatic wheels. These are custom tires on a custom rim and their size and build tend to consume less energy. Generally, my riding on any given pneumatic wheel e-skate consumes about 30 to 38 watt hours per mile. On the Tabor, I'm consuming about 25 watt hours per mile. So it ends up giving more range than another board would with the same battery. Also, this battery and enclosure are properly designed together, so they fit perfectly without any fitment issues, which is more than I can say about another 12SAP board I had in the shop not too long ago. While the board is relatively compact, it does not lack in power or punch. The enclosure's space is used effectively, and there's enough in this machine to hit way above most, if not all, of the current hot ticket items that inhabit the import production escape market. The board is set to a very decent power level right out of the box, pushing about 200 motor amps, and with the VESC's smooth power delivery, you get consistent power that does not disappear above 15 miles per hour. The board ships with settings that bring it to a place where it can outpace most of what you're likely to encounter on a group ride, but will still keep the board working at a level where it's not going to burn itself out and break. I understand that absolutely many riders have boards that last a long time and they don't have problems. That's how it should be. However, I do run a repair shop, and so I have come to see patterns of what boards come in and why, and it's usually for things that, in my opinion, are basic things to get right to avoid issues with durability, longevity, and repairability. Specifically, it's usually the battery or the drivetrain, and Hoyt has a history of getting those things very right. There's a lot of attention paid to those things, and that is something that will deliver value long after a rider has received the board. The Tabor just gets it all right for me. It delivers a longboard ride feel that's made solid by the deck design and the trucks. It's driven by a drivetrain that puts practicality first, and it's powered by electronics that put the proper amount of respect into the basics of good quality construction. No inflated numbers, no empty hype language, no bullshit. It's a quality skateboard that works and will continue to work. As I said earlier, I'm buying one for myself. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Take care of yourselves.